Hey guys, Dr. Ben here, Functional Medicine Centers. Excited to talk to you today. I'm bringing in a special guest. This is my wife, Michelle Galliard. Uh, she's gonna be helping us go over what type of exercise is best for you because it is very individualized, just like our eating process, just like we talk about with blood sugar. Exercise is a very individualized thing and not everybody needs to be doing an hour long spin class. Not everybody needs to be uh, going for just three walks a week, but we need to have it individualized to that person. So I'm gonna have Michelle tell a little bit of her story and how she found the uh, exercise that worked best for her in her health recovery and then give you guys some ideas on what's gonna be helpful for you to get your best you possible. Hi there, so Michelle B here. I, I mean, my background is in uh, exercise science and uh, master's in exercise physiology with Dr. Gallier, where we met. Um, but after having four boys and um, taking care of a farm and driving around town to soccer practices and all of that, I was not exercising. I, I admit I was scrawny and um, health started creeping up on me and there actually came a point where I called out to a friend who was a functional medicine doctor and said, it was a girlfriend of mine and her husband was also a doctor, and I said, I think I'm losing my mind. I don't know what's going on. I can't remember things. I can't function. I'm exhausted. I just want to lie in bed all day, um, you know, asking a doc and, and other people, and they said, I don't know what this is. Um, you know, the children and, and Ben would ask me where something was in the house, and this blank stare would come over me and they said, where, where's my wife? Where's mommy? What? She has the elephant memory. She juggles breastfeeding babies and cooking dinner and driving to soccer practices and I couldn't anymore. Um, to the point where we had to get a nanny to help me just lie in bed all day and um, you know try to make it. And so we did all the testing and discovered you know piece by piece of the onion that there was autoimmune disease that was attacking my, attacking my brain in three places. Um, and then we tested further, it was attacking my blood-brain barrier, and then we tested even further and we found Lyme disease. And um, we started treatments for that, and you know, I was doing IVs with glutathione and silver, and herxing from those, and lying in bed, shaking and nauseous and crying, and um, wishing this would just end. I was just rereading, so this is what my book, I know this is totally backwards on Facebook, um, but I'll put it right side link. Um, this is what the story is about, and I was rereading it today and, and tearing up, just remembering it feels like so long ago, but it was really only about six years ago, because our little one is nine, and he was about three at this time. So um, we finally, one of my practitioners, a friend in Boulder, recommended high-intensity interval training. And like I said, I was super scrawny, out of shape, not moving, and he said, it, it stimulates brain-derived neurotropic factor, you need that for rehealing your brain, just give it a shot. And I started doing, you know, just in the house with no equipment, with a chair, just started doing these movements. And they, by far, were the most profound healing technique that I incorporated. I was doing diet, I was doing supplements, I was doing IVs, I was doing anything they threw at me. And I, um, I forgot the major aspect. We found out that I was living, we were living in neurotoxic mold. There's five different types of really toxic mold in the farmhouse that we were in. And so we needed to get that out or get us out. Um, but when I started doing the high intensity interval training, even while still living in the moldy home, I started recovering brain cells, memory, you know, brain fog clearing, the ability to read to my children because my eyes wouldn't converge when my brain was doing so bad. That was repairing and coming back to me even while I was still living in the mold. So I created my website, Mindcar Method, which we'll link and he'll talk about. Um, and I created this book because the interval training was so healing for me. And Dr. Gallier is going to talk about, you know, why certain types of, why is the interval training helpful? Um, what, what does it do to nurture your adrenals rather than, you know, kind of wearing down? Um, and the other fact, blah, blah, the other aspect of my mind core, um, during that struggle, um, I remember coming to a point where that literally was all that I thought about. It was literally all I obsessed about. And I came to him in the shower or something and said, but what if the, you know, what if the brain's barrier is being attacked and the Lyme is getting in there and then if we heal the brain, blood brain barrier, then will the Lyme be stuck in a blah, 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 And he just looked at me and said, oh my gosh, all you talk about is 666. And I took that as such an affront, like, well, you're the doctor, you're supposed to care. And I mulled that over and thought, well, what else could I think about? I'm sick. And this realization came and I said, oh, I mean, I could think about health. 
what if I started envisioning being healthy? What if I started thinking about what it looked like to play with my children and, and mountain bike with my kids and, and live life without this illness? And so that's part of my creation of Mind Core is that the mind um, is hugely important for what you're experiencing in life. Awesome. Thank you for telling your story there. So two, two thoughts on exercise. And we, we've talked about this recently that there is a movement side and there, there's the actual exercise part of it. And one of the studies that I look at that really showed this was with blood sugar monitoring, like we do with patients, we check blood sugar, see, is it going up too high? Is it going down too low? People track their blood sugar and they did two types of exercise. One group did three cardiovascular, go for long walks three times a week. The other group did one seven minute bicycle sprint once a week and they tracked their blood sugar and the group that did the one seven minute bicycle sprint had better blood sugar stabilization than the group that was doing the three longer ones. So movement is really, really important. Go for a swim, go for a bike ride, go for a walk, anything like that, you've got to get movement. But exercise is a different thing. Exercise is where you get your heart rate up into a, the certain range that you want it to be in. You get blood flow to your brain differently. You're going to actually contract muscles and that muscle tone is crucial, especially for uh, any of you that are women and probably over 50 or so and aging. You've got to have as much strength as you possibly can. That's going to keep you upright, going to keep you from falling, all types of different things. But that muscle tone is going to burn more calories. It's going to um, use use glucose better. It's going to do so many different things. So we can't just go for a walk. I hear that from patients all the time. Are you exercising? Yes, I take the dog for a walk. Well, the dog pees here, the dog pees there, and it stops and starts and talk to the neighbor, whatever. It's not true exercise. So that's where the high intensity interval training comes into play. That's going to be that uh, five to 10 minutes, maybe even 15 at the most, depending on someone's adrenals and their ability to function. And it's going to be, let's get the heart rate up. There's specific ranges that we like for the heart rate to be in. And so for when I'm exercising, I, I do my, uh, and I've talked about this a bunch, I do my treadmill work where I just go for two, three miles, talk about, um, uh, I, I do the praying, do uh, any, any type of reading, journaling, anything like that. And then I get on to my exercise routine and that might be five to 15 minutes. So this morning, I I did 130 wall balls. That's where you take a 20 pound ball and go do a squat and throw it up over and over and over. Um, I did that and that took about yeah, eight to 10 minutes and my heart rate was up. It would go up to close to 150. I'd wait for it to get down to 130 and I would do that over and over and over and get that blood flow going. I feel great. My body feels good. I'm not going to be too tired or sore later today and I feel really good. Hey Paula, good to see you there in West Virginia. So this is what we're talking about, and that's why Michelle's made her website, MindCore, three different levels of exercises all the way from beginning, intermediate to advanced. But to show you guys all of these different ways to do it, we've got to be able to move and get that strength going as much as we possibly can. It creates BDNF. I talk about this in my brain book. Michelle talks about it in her book, and that's going to increase uh, repair of the brain, and it's going to actually um, cause new cells to be generated in that brain. It's going to actually create no, more brain mass, which is which is pretty amazing. There's only so many things that can do that. Uh, hey, Barb, good to see you there in Nebraska. So exercise is crucial. Um, you want to tell people, Michelle, a couple uh, couple of little exercise tips that that you've uh, you've given your clients over the years. Hmm. You know, I do. I'll have women come to me and say, you know, I see how you look, I see how fit you are, and whatever. There's no way you just do like 10 minutes a day. I just don't even believe it. Tell me you do like an hour of cardio, or you're out there cranking weights, and I swear, seriously, I don't. You know, we're out there. I did 30 of the wall balls, by the way, <laughs> three sets, and I said, yeah, I'm good. I'm going on to something else. But um, I keep it moderate, right? So uh, a huge thing for me is the core, that your deep transverse core is being used properly so that you're uh, stabilizing and keeping everything safe. But then really that, that interval training, what it can do is help not overtax your adrenals. Those hardcore like kickboxing workouts and spin when you're taking that heart rate above your 180 minus your age, 
you're taxing stuff. And with women, we don't think that we need testosterone, but let me tell you at, I'm not gonna tell you my age, but you can probably guess, we want testosterone by this age. It's going down and that's our drive, our motivation, our muscle tone, our sex drive, our a lot of things. And when you tax those adrenals with those overworkout, you tax your body's, your adrenal's ability to create that DHA, to create that testosterone, to create all of your, you know, neurotransmitter and hormones and immune system. So when you're taxing those adrenals, you're taxing your immune system as well, which we don't want to be doing these days. Absolutely. And there was a study done back in the Soviet Union in the 60s and 70s when they used to be really good in the Olympics. And they, they would pull out blood from these highly trained Olympic athletes. And even in 30 to 35 minutes, their uh, testosterone, their growth hormone would start dropping during that exercise and their cortisol, their main adrenal hormone would start going up. So it's taxing the adrenals. Yes, they could push through. So what they did, they did shorter 30 minute workouts. They would eat, sleep, do another one and do two or three a day and got more value out of that. And so you don't need to go to that hour long spin class and just beat yourself in the ground and, and all that. That's actually gonna be more stressful. And any of you have stress? Out there maybe a couple <laughs> so we're, we're all a little bit stressed you know Monday night I was out uh, at soccer practice in Costco until 8 o'clock last night we we're at another event with another kid until probably 8 o'clock tonight we're gonna be at, at, uh, <laughs> at, at uh, midweek church service till probably 8 830 uh, we've got soccer starting Saturday morning 8 o'clock in Denver an hour away we're gonna be leaving at 6 o'clock in the morning so I <laughs> sounds like a lot as I talk about it so uh, what 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 I'm saying is that I I don't have the reserves to go uh, you know, to, okay, I'm going to do this hour long class. One, I don't have time in my schedule, but two, uh, I don't, I don't have the inner strength and, and adrenal reserves to do that. So I, I do just enough to be able to feel good, have energy like this all day long. If anyone's been in the, in the practice, they know when they see me at five o'clock, same amount of energy going by the time eight 30 comes around. <laughs> it's, I'm, I'm kind of out, but um, but the rest of the day, you know, it's let's go, go, go. And there's no coffee, there's no caffeine, there's no Red Bull, nothing to get it going. This is just just how how we roll. So, uh, you know, it, super excited. If you guys have any questions, pop those down below. We're gonna put uh, Michelle's website on there. You can try out some of the the different exercises on there, um, and then uh, we'll put the the heart rate range as well. Uh, that's really really helpful for that people we're to, to stay into. So really adamant with each. Other. Are you in your heart rate? Yeah. So you using in. using your your watch, your Fitbit, fit fit whatever it is. So uh, we'll put that all down below. If you've got questions at all, pop those down below. Um, we we love to to check questions and uh, share this with anybody that you know that is dealing with exercise and uh, and any questions through there. Or if you've got any specific questions, let us know and we'll go through that. So great to see you guys. So we're gonna drop a code in for my website for a two week trial to be able to check it out and I'll put in there how to do that. I have two new pages coming with some Pilates kind of yoga interval training based. I used to teach yoga and Pilates until like 10 years ago. Um, and some uh, exercise with weights if, or uh, equipment, treadmills, things if you have at home. Uh, we have about a dozen uh, videos that are in editing right now and will pop up in the next couple of weeks. But if you have any suggestions on things you would like to see, if you had the ability to not go to a gym and wear a mask, you could actually work out from your home with these videos, what would you be looking for? What would sound yep. exciting? So, so look for that uh, two week trial period on there. You can try those out and see what you do. Um, and we'll go from there. Take care guys. Stay have strong. A day.